Hey everybody, it's Anthony here from Armstrong. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, today I'm in the middle of the beautiful Riverwood Conservancy here in Mississauga. It's a bit of an oasis in the middle of all the hustle and bustle. And today we're gonna be starting our brand new Birding Basics video series. The idea behind this video series is we're gonna be taking you from the ground up and get you started feeding the birds right away. So today, like I said, I'm at Riverwoods. I'm gonna take advantage of that. I'm gonna reach out to some friends who work here and are much more knowledgeable in all of this than I am. Uh, and they're gonna take you through some of the most popular birds you might find in your backyard, the right things to feed them, and even the right time of year to find them. So I hope you enjoy it. Take care, everybody, and uh, see you on the next one. Welcome to Riverwood. My name is Derek Stone, and I am the Conservation and Program Manager at the Riverwood Conservancy. And my name is Stephanie Keeler. I'm the Community Program Coordinator here at the Riverwood Conservancy. And we're going to be talking to you a little bit today about our resident wildlife, specifically our feathered friends. So what we have here is a little bird called the black-capped chickadee. And it's one of the most common birds that you'll see in the winter time. And that's because there's something called a resident species. They don't migrate, they stay here all winter long. Now they do something really, really cool in the fall. They do something called caching. And it's basically when they take some seed or insects or any kind of food source and they'll go throughout the, the forest and they'll hide food in all these little places throughout the forest behind bark or lichen. And they'll be able to actually remember all of those different places in the winter time so that they can access food when there's food resources are really, really low in the winter time. Now some of their favorite food, right now I have safflower seeds on my hand, but they also really like black boiled sunflower seed. That's probably one of their favorite seeds and probably the best way to attract them to your feeder as well. And as you can see, they are very friendly. Here at Riverwood, they'll actually come straight to your hand and they'll grab some seeds right off of your hand and you can feel like a Disney princess. <laughs> So I'm looking around right now for uh, a bird because I just heard it. And it's normally a particularly loud bird, and that bird is the blue jay. Now a lot of people know the blue jay for being those really, really bright blue colors. Uh, but it's also a particularly loud bird and makes a lot of different sounds. I'm not hearing it right now, but if I really wanted to bring that into my backyard so I could get really good looks at that blue jay, the best way to do that is with peanuts. Now they'll eat all sorts of seeds, uh, sunflower, safflower, that kind of thing. Uh, but peanuts are really the key to bringing those blue jays right into your backyard. And what we have here is a downy woodpecker. This is a little bit more rare. Um, not often you have these woodpeckers coming to your hands, but once again, when food resources are really low, um, birds become a little bit more brave and they may land right on your hand to get a snack from you as well. Our woodpecker species, they love all different kinds of foods, insects, seeds, berries. Um, probably the best way to attract them is black oil sunflower seeds. I know they like peanuts as well, uh, safflower seeds, things like that too. And that one that just landed on my hand is actually a male. And how you know it's a male is it had that big red splotch on the back of its head. So downy woodpeckers, the male have the, has the red red splotch and the females they don't have any red on the back of their head that's how you can kind of tell the difference between the two. So another one of the common birds at Riverwood is one that a lot of people are familiar with because of its bright bright red color and that is of course the cardinal. Uh, now the cardinal is pretty common here at Riverwood but what a lot of people don't know is that the female actually doesn't have that red coloring quite to the same extent it's actually quite a drab bird uh, so they look quite different uh, between the male and the female. But once they do start mating, you'll find them almost always together. Uh, the male and the female are almost always found in a similar location. And if you're looking to bring that location to your backyard, one of the best ways to do that is with black oil sunflower seed, but also safflower seed. Safflower just seems to be the magic for cardinals. They really, really love that stuff. So if you're looking to hear that clarion cardinal call in the spring, safflower seed will bring them right in. So one of the lesser known birds at Riverwood is called the dark-eyed junco. Now, juncos are actually one of my favorite birds. They're really, really beautiful and quite unique. They've got this dark, slaty, coal-colored back and this bright, bright white chest. And you can almost always find them in big groups around the bottom of a feeder. And one of the reasons for that right now, particularly in the winter, is that these birds are Arctic birds, typically. And when they come down here to this area, they're actually looking at their summer vacation. So they're looking to get their beaks on just about anything they can eat. 
So if you have mixed seed in your feeder, a lot of the time that will provide a lot of good opportunities for juncos to be feeding, particularly underneath the feeders. They'll go for some of the feed that some of the other birds might not be so interested in. So um, being able to have a mixed bag at your feeder is sometimes really helpful in bringing in our little friends, the juncos.